Now I was really glad when I went up there and I saw this because this is a kit that I wanted to get but at the time I didn't have the money for it to order into the store and then of course when I did have the money they were all sold out of these so I wanted one because I'm working on these Model T kits and this is it. So this one is based on the 1923 AMT Ford panel vans and uh, th but they made it into the Roadster and I'm not too sure how different this is from their 1925 Model T Roadsters but now I can know <coughs> pardon me and I'll do a full unboxing of this later but uh, there are some cool bits to it it looks pretty much like the you know 27 mo or sorry the 25 Model T's but I do think it does have some differences Ooh. We can at least look at the decals. I'm going to spoil it this time around. What do they got in here? Oh, look at all those flames. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Eight balls, skulls. Yeah, that is cool. Too bad I'm not using those for... Uh, I might use them on a different Model T bucket. But I won't use them on this one. Yeah, cool stuff. Cool, cool beans. Let's... Uh, there we go. All those great features. All right, so look for the what's in the box of this one coming up. Now, speaking of the AMT 1925 Model T kit, I was really happy to find this one because, again, this is one that I don't have. Build two complete cars, old timer or rod. And <laughs> look at this picture. You've got the Keystone cop bringing this guy to throw him in the back of the paddy wagon, and then his assailant is going to hit the keystone cop with a base <laughs> so that's what a picture okay so you can also build it as these hot rods here and we've seen these on uh, other amt model kits now this is not a round two or an rc2 kit this is an old oldie but a goodie so again pretty happy for that there's that uh, lincoln engine for the hot rod and in the center you've got your vintage parts there we go is that better Lincoln engine vintage parts and then the interior bits the custom ones do have a little bit of a rip on the box lid now this is sort of a mixed bag kit I'll just open it up but it's um yeah see here's the the tall tea glass so I don't think that is supposed to be in there but we have all the chrome we have parts and a seat take a seat instructions and they're printed in blue oh this looks really cool cop-out paddy wagon Ooh, look, still got, got two sheets of decals. Big genuine Ford parts. I could use that on something else. Moving violation. Look at that flower power. <laughs> That's actually cool. That would be neat on something. This is a one-piece decal sheet. If you catch it in the light, you'll notice that it doesn't have any little borders around the image. It's just right smooth across. So I could soak this in water and pull the whole sheet right off the backing paper. Psychedelic relic. <laughs> Funny. The hippie stuff. The hippie hippie shades. Mm. Looks like most of the... Almost looks like the flower wagon. Except the back end is different. I think it's pretty much the same thing. Why are my instructions upside down? Anyway, okay, getting back to the mixed bag of this thing. Yeah, see, here's... I don't think these belong in there. Okay, this this is really, though, the most important part of it. Is that the wagon bits are all in there. Including these rear doors with the screen. Thank goodness. Because without these parts, those parts there, and these parts... <laughs> 
um, I can't, I wouldn't be able to build it. But like the other stuff here, any current AMT 1925 Model T kit is going to have it. And, you know, as you can tell, if you're building a hundred of these things, you've got a hundred of the parts. There's that Lincoln engine in Caterpillar yellow. <laughs> There's my T fenders. Yeah, it looks good. So far, so good. I've got enough parts. Should be able to give it a good go. And to go with that paddy wagon, I had to get this one. AMT's 1927 Street Rod T. Now, originally I was not going to pick this up, but then I did, and thank goodness, and I'll show you why in a minute. So from the box top, and whenever I look at this on the web, it shows this as this big hot rod thing, right? And, um, well, I mean, the hot rod is cool. Don't get me wrong. But here's the real cool part for me. I did not know that you could build this thing factory stock. So I'm sure glad I picked this thing up because it's no longer in production. Look at the bottom of the box. Ask for thrill show hauler truck and trailer at a special low price. Now this is from the 70s. Leonardo da Vinci invention, six of his greatest creations. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what that was. Have to look it up on um, on scale scale mates, right? Yeah, scale mates. <clears throat> but anyway, I can build this stock. So I think I will do that. That's cool. This little bit here. It's like um, my uncle's Dykes Encyclopedia shows you how to make those for a service truck. Now, I don't know about this plastic it's wrapped in. Is this an original plastic seal? Do they actually fold the corners? Oh, you can't see. Oh, there. Do they fold the corners like that? Because there is a hot, you know, line across here. But again, I'm not really sure what's going on. <clears throat> I won't know until I open it. But yeah. AMT model kit, 27 street rod, fire truck, unbuilt for $50. And then there's the features, same as the uh, Ford police car. Oh, I can make the paddy wagon make it fit with the police car. Yes. <laughs> Steering column. There's the uh, front front neck, double-headed overhead twin overhead cam thing. Again, though, I'm glad I picked this up because, yeah, I can add this with my dad's fire equipment too. Okay, so now we get into the really cool stuff. Check this out. This is the Gangbusters 1927 Lincoln Roadster. Now, my friend John did have a few of the Gangbusters, but I did not pick up all of them because um, my dad built a bunch of these when they were not the Gangbusters, you know, back in the, the day. And I do have some that are not Gangbusters from back in the day. So those are not really, you know, to get more of them is uh, kind of redundant. But the reason why I got this one is because this is the only one that has a 1920s female figure in it. And there she is. And I also want the figures, because I want to do a 1920s, early 30s style gangster diorama. And I need figures and whatever. This is so cool. On the side here, you got the little story. Chicago, Illinois. And then the different ways you can build this. You can build it as a police car, too. And then the busted windshield. Fold the hood up. Now, I did have to restore my dad's because it was broken, and uh, I managed to get it together. I used some metal wire or something. I I did a video on restoring it, I think, somewhere. Uh, but yeah. <clears throat> and then everything crashing and smashing in there. Big L's cruising car. Over 200 total parts. And then it tells you what it's all going down. The uh, 32 Chrysler Roadster that AMT just re-released, that's also in this series originally and has the figures. But there's the the woman driving the car. That'd be great to resin cast that or something. Oh, it's even got um, moonshine in there. The uh, The guns in the violin cases. 
all that stuff. Really cool. And I'm gonna do a big fat what's in the box, and hopefully you guys are gonna like it. And here's the other Lincoln kit too, the town car, it's sneaking up in the back of the picture. So again, I'm happy I got this one. Um, now most of you people might think, oh, it's a Holy Grail kit, you know, for me. I mean, this might be for other people as well, don't get me wrong. But you know, a Holy Grail kit. The thing is, I don't really have a Holy Grail model car or whatever. Um, because the way I see it is people that have a Holy Grail kit, it's like something they had or they saw at one point or their brother had or whatever, and they wanted one. And when they went to get it, they couldn't get it. And then it wasn't there and they've been on the hunt for it. And certain models are like thousands of dollars now. And then they find one somehow. And then they're like, oh, that's my Holy Grail. I got my Holy Grail kit. Well, I don't really have anything that I can consider a Holy Grail kit that I'm going to be like that. But basically, anything I think is cool, I'll get. Now, speaking of the gangbusters and somebody's Holy Grail kit, I'm pretty sure this could be somebody's Holy Grail kit. The 32 Chevy Cabriolet with the panel truck. Now, this, apparently the mold for this body was corrupted or something, I don't know. But it's no longer available by AMT. And here, you can actually build one of these cars. Now, I have the Cabriolet from uh, later kits from the Connoisseur Classics. Got it from the Connoisseur Classic kit, and my dad built one, so I've inherited that. So this is where it's at. And uh, check that out. Extra bonus, Street Rod Pack. World's first nine-in-one kit. And here's all these different ways you can build this thing. Build your choice of five Gangbusters. Again, a paddy wagon, a booze hauler, a mail truck, then uh, just a 32 Chevy panel van, and then the 32 Chevy Cabriolet, and then you can build it as a getaway car or a police pursuit Cabriolet. I guess back in the days, the police just bought anything. <laughs> okay, and then going over to this side. We have a ground-mounted machine gun for when the crime fighting gets really severe. <laughs> and then we got our gangster shooting downward. A fire hydrant, so now I can build my diorama. Convertible top, rear opening doors, paddy wagon seats. Then we've got our policeman here. There's a mailbag, a roadblock, opening rumble seat on the cabriolet, and a luggage rack. Then you get your big blown Chevy V8 and uh, tires and that. So I will be doing a full unboxing, but I just want to pop this open for a sec. There's all the chrome goodies. There's different ways to do this. Stock convertible or truck custom truck or street rod. How many of you have built the custom versions of these? I don't think about I don't know if I remember seeing one anywhere that somebody had built. Hood can be folded as shown in step six or the sides cut off. Hot rod. Piece fire hydrant. Oh <laughs> There is the um, the dog from Masterbox that's supposed to be, well, peeing on a car tire, but you could actually have him going where he should be on the fire hydrant. There's a policeman with your choice of two different hands. It would be cool to resin cast him. You get a few policemen with a machine gun. World War I Maxim machine gun. It's when the crime gets really bad. Or when you got to get shoot further than the Thompsons can get you. Okay, there's the panel van body. Thankfully, it's still got both of the hood hinge tops on there, and one isn't cracked off. Interesting dome light in there. There's the decals. I don't think these are going to be good anymore. U.S. mail. <laughs> 
see a leg. Oh, I think somebody glued this together. Thankfully they didn't glue it off register. Okay, there's something that is interesting about the body. Now somebody told me that it got altered into this for the vampire van. So maybe it did. Let's check this out for a minute. Yeah, it's the same wheelbase. But I don't know because the back portion is square on the vampire van. Maybe that doesn't mean anything. Who knows what they did. But um, remember I was talking about the other cabriolet that I own. Connoisseur Classics. So here's my idea. I can build a hearse, 32 Chevy hearse, factory stock. Maybe it's shorter than what it should be, but still it's going to look neat by using the vampire van that came out, Barnabas Collins one. So there's that, and then now I can actually build the, uh, the police one too. So that'll be really cool when getting all this done. So that is, uh, is something neat. Let's take a look at the next bit. Next up, I got another book. This is the Complete Car Modeler number two, forward by Lord Montagu of, of Bolu. Bolu, I don't know. But I do believe this guy makes up all this stuff out of metal. And shows you how to do it. Too bad I didn't have part one of the book. There's the uh, Bugatti Royale. Here's a, here's his camera bag for when he's going out and taking pictures of cars. That's crazy. All his tools and everything. It should be a good read. Even though I'm starting in part two. <laughs> I think this is a Hoobly kit or something. Or maybe not Hoobly, but uh, oh, Posher. Could also be a Posher kit. Here he's uh, machining something in the metal lathe. Interesting stuff. Oh, how to make door hinges. I don't know. Oh, mate. no, wait, look what he's doing. There. Sorry, I gotta show this upside down. <laughs> He's taken uh, sheets of metal, cutting them into shape, and then he's um, making little welts in here so he can bend them up around the fender mold. It's a buck, the fender buck and the body buck. So he's actually forming metal around this stuff. There they are there, hand carved. This is a uh, sort of my dad's level of building a model or what he could have done anyway. <clears throat> Had he put his mind to it, my dad went into vacuum forming instead. <laughs> Somehow I think um, bending metal is cheaper and easier than, or sorry, bending plastic is cheaper and easier than hammering brass sheet. Still though, this is all how you would do it. So again, another little cool book that I picked up. Now speaking of more paper material, I got this other book, How to Wire Your Street Rod. And this is kind of cool. I might be able to use it on my real cars. But it's sort of more of a cartoon sketch, but shows you where all the wires go to the different modules that you can buy, and connectors, and this sort of thing. Now this is for, of course, hooking up real cars, and I've got a 51 Studebaker out there where basically all the wires are gone in it. They were all 6 volt as well. So kind of nice to get this. And um, yeah, maybe I can get my old Studebaker some wiring. Okay, so here I've got a Rod and Custom from 1964. So there are some model kit parts, or, you know, parts. Uh, what do you call it? <laughs> some ideas. Uh, column. Really interesting thing they did here. Did this vent wrap into the body panel. Start digging for some uh, 
some L channel from uh, 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 Plastruct. <laughs> See what you can, weird things you can do in your cars. There's some artist sketch. It looks like a Pontiac again. By Tom Daniel. The Tom Daniels. Ooh, look at that. Cool stuff. A little AMT catalog. Not just skill, but authentic detail. What engine? Okay. Who knows their AMT kits? What engine did that come out of? <laughs> custom models, each one authentically styled by one of the nation's top customizers or on the exclusive AMT team. The Alexander Brothers, Bud Anderson, Bill Cushenberry, Gene De Dean Jeffries, Gene Winfield, sorry, Dean Jeffries, Gene Winfield, and George Barris. And that brings us back to the 53 Ford. There we go. The pickup truck. That's why that um, grill is in there, and it's also in the George Barris book. Look at the back end. <laughs> you hit the tail lights and no one can see it because it's pointing the wrong direction. <laughs> Maybe the overhead plane can see it. Drag racing in here. Okay, that's pretty neat. Now, I think this one is really moldy. It smells pretty bad. But there's a bunch of cool custom things in here. From the 50s, early 60s. Ed Roth's Beatnik Bandit down there. Okay, I got a blue printer. There's a dusty one. <laughs> but that's uh, the Shark Attack. Remember the blue printer magazine from I think the 80s and 90s, early 90s? Oh, look, somebody put figures in there. Oh, they're watching the Mantis. Oh, that's kind of a cool idea. It's a Praying Mantis model kit in the back, and they're looking at it like a drive in movie. Oh, look at these diorama ideas. There's a drag race down here. Isn't that cool? Okay, what else? Yeah, I've got some of those um, praying mantis things and whatnot. The giant tarantula. Look at these pit crew things, that's neat. I tried to enter a contest in here one year and they they denied me because my pictures weren't good enough or something silly. And that was the um, AMT. They had a contest for the 58 Chevy. Okay, so here we've got custom rods and ideas. Look at this stretched model, or a 32 Ford with two V8s sitting in there with all the Weber carbs. Crazy. Must have been fast, but like, how would you corner this thing? Look at this. How would you corner that? <laughs> V16, basically, through uh, two V8s. Kit cars. Frames. Oops. What, what's going on here? I remember these art, artistic things. It's a fresh air vent going into the tire. Oh, and that's a uh, uh, what do you call it? Fender skirt. Moon Glow Dwayne Stacks 54 Chevy Bel Air hardtop coupe. Oh yeah, there's the uh, the wheel cover there. Official tires, blah, blah. Cool stuff. I have to take a look at this later. Okay, then I've got a rod ideas. Now, I think I have these, but these were the ones that got water damaged. So it's nice to have a fresh copy. Yay, hello. Hi, we're riding our tea bucket. <laughs> Good old 70s. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah, what a paint job on that. That must have taken hours to put on. And now it's no longer in vogue. 
<laughs> clown wagon. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe it is in vogue. Look at that engine. Now, you might... Th is that actually... No, I see what's going on. Fooled me for a minute. It's got dual hood scoops. But it almost looks like there's two engines, one behind another. But that's impossible. That's a chrome-plated firewall back there. That's how it looks like on the side. Maybe I don't have this one. I don't remember that car. I don't know. It's hard to say. I got so many car magazines. Look at the Volkswagen hoods. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, I didn't have this one. Thought I did. No, well, now I do. <laughs> okay. I meant from before, you know. The before times. Okay. I know I had this one from before, so that's good to get it back. All this cool stuff. It's really nice to have a collection of these uh, different hot rod magazines because you get to learn the styles and what was available back in different time periods. Like in the early 60s, 50s and 60s, they had hubcaps in the wheels. And then in when you're getting into the 70s, it's all the mag wheels like the Kragers and the slot style and whatever. Summer of 69. It's almost like 67 is when the mag wheels start coming in. But anything before that and you're still into the hubcaps. Look at this Mercury Cougar beside this... Hey, didn't AMT make this thing? Or MPC? The Super Snow Sport? Seems familiar. Let me know in the comments down below. There's an AMC Rambler down there. SC Rambler. And the uh, Javelin. And the AMX. No, that's still a Javelin. But still. Love, it. Love the AMCs. Oh, the AMX 3. Or 2, pardon me. <laughs> that car was cool. Too bad they never produced this. But there were enough prototypes out there. Yeah, two. <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. Oh, that's Beverly Hillbilly's um, grandma's hot rod thing. Chevy's Astro 3. That was a kind of a neat car. I think Hot Wheels made something like that. Look at the tires on this thing. <laughs> what World War II vehicle did that come off of? Mini boot. Cams. How to adjust your camshafts. Bonneville. Old Cuda. Volkswagens. Novas. Or maybe these are the new cars for 72. No, budget budget customizing. That's what it's about. I could add some girls. Look at the seat there. <laughs> oh yeah. I always find this kind of interesting. So the, the people in the early 70s, maybe even through the 70s, they were, you know, they still had the pompadour style hairdos, some of them, from the 50s. And, but yet they're wearing 70s clothes. It's really a, kind of bizarre. Like some carryover. Like how kids today are starting to dress up again like punk rockers from the 70s. Look at that neat Krager wheel. That's cool. I like that. See? So these are all the wheels you had in 72. So now, if you want to build a model kit and you want to hot rod it and style it in that era, you know these are all the wheels. Chrome reverse wheels. Of course, that's going back to the 50s. But yeah, there's the uh, Magnum 500, the Mickey Thompson, the RPM style. That's the holes in it. There's a Rocket RPM dish. Oh, sorry, new RPM one-piece mag wheel. I don't know. There's a different slot style, a couple of slot styles, and a couple of, uh, there's my favorite, the Keystone. Love that. AMT's 1944 in uh, the 1983 edition of the kit has these. Love them. And all mine if the rim cracked. <laughs> Hate that part of that, but... Keystone mags. 
a keystone that looks like um, Krager. Yeah, there's a the Krager SS down, down below. I mean, five spoke wheel design. There's these kind too. You notice the. Got the little dips around there. Look at that one, that's neat. Blade style. And your wire wheels. Uh, again, going back into the 50s with that. But yeah, so 70s hot rods, these are the wheels. Even uh, custom cars. Who's that? Dan Gurney. Right there, checking out his uh, 69 Cougar. No, um, no color, but slick pages. Hold on, what was this? Hot Rod Horseless Carriage is a replica of an 1893 Duryea. <laughs> However you spell it. D-U-R-Y-E-A. However you say it. Oh, hey. Look what's down there. Paddy wagon. Fuzz on this car is the young generation's nickname for police in case you're over 30. The fuzz. Well, now. <laughs> hey, there's the Red Baron. With Snoopy. Cool stuff. Glad I got these. Yeah, see? Summer of 1969, and there's a guy who's got a hairdo like Elvis. So, <laughs> okay, <laughs> Rod and Custom, February 71. Again, pretty cool looking. Looks like the Beatles. <laughs> I don't know. Camel filters, they're not for everybody, but then they don't need, they don't try to be. Yeah, I don't know. STP, keep cool. Chat STP. That'd be funny if there was chat STP and it's just like a CGI version of um, like a... Actually, that'd be kind of neat. Go on to chat STP and talk about motor oil. Actually, I wonder if you could go... Hey, there's an idea. Has anybody gone on to chat GTP and asked questions like um, what modern... I don't know, let's let's make something weird up. Like what modern carburetor would fit on a factory stock 1950 Ford intake manifold? You know what I mean? Or something like that, some weird obscure parts. Like uh like what what parts can you use to replace uh like 1969 SC Rambler's hood scoop or something. I don't know, whatever. But maybe uh Maybe give that a try on chat GTP the, uh, and see what happens. See if it can link something up. Like maybe you could mount a Dodge carburetor onto a Chevy Vega or something. I don't know. Well, I only said that because I saw that. But I mean, it's worth a try. Anything's worth a try. Oh, it's neat. Hot rod inflation. Let's cut the rising cost out of street rotting. Ooh, I wonder what they think now. <laughs> Check out that Model T. Ford bangers. Four bangers. Yep, cool stuff. Fourth Mexican 1000. Here, there's a sob. I just saw a YouTube video where these guys took one of those sobs and it was sitting out in a field and it was trapped in in its spot by three trees that had grown up around the front area and the side door and they managed to cut the car out of the trees and bring it home. That's the uh, Willie's Coupe. Need more models of that, guys. Yep, some cool stuff I picked up. Look at that. Panasonic stereo. Who had one of those in their house? Okay, and then my final magazine here is an amazing figure model magazine and this of course is Monster Models. Now I do have another one last thing I'm going to show you after this. 
Oh boy, I really, uh... <laughs> I really picked up the right magazine here. I'll show you in a minute. Oh, remember this model? For those of you guys that are into this. I wanted this one. Lon Chaney. And then around him, he's got all the monsters that he created with his makeup. And he's got the, uh, the face there. That's cool. That would be a cool model for me. I think they're expensive. <laughs> okay. There. There's a uh, Vlad de Piche. Oh, that's cool. Vampira on the couch. Yeah, neat stuff. All these different uh, monsters you can make. Geometric figure kits. <laughs> Jurassic Park stuff. King Kong in here. War of the Worlds. Or sorry, Mars Attacks. Right there. <laughs> Based off of the cards, I think. When the movie came out around then. Look at all the different ones they got. <laughs> Too bad though, that movie, I think, bombed. If I remember right. Okay, so I'm going to show one more thing that I got. And this one's really cool, and I'm going to try to apply it in some models in uh, future videos, so get ready. All right, so I have one more model kit to show you. I forgot it was in the stack behind me here. But this is what I was leading up to of the cool thing that I wanted to show you. This is the Extreme Weathered Vehicles slash Reality Volume 2. And I do believe this is from AK Interactive. Let's just turn it over for a sec. Yeah, AK. This is a really cool book. I'm going to have to try to see if my wholesaler has number one, and I'm going to pick it up, and uh, then I'll have both. And it's in English, but there's some uh, translation issues I found out. <laughs> but anyway, this thing is a complete guide with all the techniques on how to rust stuff up. Look at that Chevy there. That looks cool. I've been pouring over this thing. They've got like boathouses in here, how to make them, build them, make them look good. They've got interiors. This is a bakery. But of course, uh, oh yeah, the surf diorama. But man, there's a, a demolition derby car. Just neat. Shows you the interior, where uh, rusty, where all the welds were. There's um, gucking up your white walls. There's stuff in here about um, your engine. There's weathering. Most of the weathering products here are AK Interactive, of course. Maybe I should uh, bring that line of paint in in the future, the far distant future. Look at that tractor. Apparently this tractor is only about that big. <laughs> so, See all the cool stuff that's going on in this book? Look at that. Looks like the real thing, but it's just a model. Especially in the wheels, with all the dirt, caked in dirt in the tires. I mean, man, this is amazing. So I'm going to try to do some of these techniques on my model. A couple of my models, a couple million of my models. Look at the building. I've seen places in Vancouver back in the day that looked like this with the uh, paint ripping off the wood and the cracked stuff it almost looks like the building's going to collapse on you and it's from sea salt and whatnot look at that and this is just a styrofoam it shows you how to make it see just styrofoam plastic card whatever really amazing stuff <laughs> Look at this tractor here. This is, this is the engine that's on their weathering kit box for their paints. And then they decided to actually finish the tractor. Look at that. 
oops, <laughs> hit the lens. Yeah, really neat. So bicycle was like abandoned in World War II. And how to make it all rusty. How to cut these little leaves. There's more of the bike rust. Just neat, awesome stuff. Look at the uh, the gas pump. I'll just turn it sideways here. It's got the the um, how do you call it the the glass missing out of here that shows the um, ah the company mobile. They'd have a mobile logo in there or Star Gasoline or whatever it is. Look at that tractor. I mean, that looks like it's really outside. Look at the muck in the wheels. Just amazing. But, like this one, it's so packed up with dirt, all you can see is just the little edges of the blade. Like, and there it is. There's a the penny. So that tractor is tiny. Just unbelievable, you know? Here's how to make a 37 Chevy, or sorry, a 39, whatever year this is. <laughs> Chevy pickup truck that's all junked up, full of stuff. Now in here it also shows you how... Okay, so his story with this thing is that the interior was lit on fire. So there, he's got all the ash in there and the seats with the springs exposed. And of course the springs would have been painted on the real car. But when it was caught on fire, it would burn all the paint off and leave the bare metal and then over time the metal would rust well he look at how he's captured that like this is crazy this is the top level stuff i want to like attempt <laughs> oh hang on i wanted to show you the engine where is he got it it's just in this zone here okay i know i saw him paint the engine here. Yeah. So it shows like spray painted it with some kind of dark rusty color and then kept going. And eventually looks like that. And that looks like a, the real thing. I've seen these like lying out in the yard and it's even got the oil, like all these vintage motors that have been sitting there surface rusting forever. They look like that. It's just amazing how they got it. AK Interactive has uh, special paints for that. Look at this, it's funny. There's like a hobo sleeping out the side of the rotted van. <laughs> oh man, amazing stuff. And look at how it's all eaten away through the body panels and everything. Just amazing. Yeah, there's the, the hobo sticking out the back and then in color. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, neat. it shows you how to do stuff with bare metal foil. So he's applying the black metal foil. Where are we here? Applying the black metal foil on the uh, rusty body and then cutting it in little sections like it's a paint peeled off. So that's a different technique for you guys. Look at along the side here how open that is. And you can even see the metal ribs or the wood ribs coming down on the inside. And yeah, look, just styrofoam, pink insulation foam, cut in certain ways. But then when he paints it up, it's like that, like a real, uh, a real uh, moldy old building. Like just amazing stuff. There it is there. And that's like what it's like in Vancouver with um, all the moss growing up along everywhere. And how it's always like damp, you know, certain parts of BC. There's that Chevy. Now look at the louvers on there. You would think that he punched them through or something. And then when you, when I was looking here, it's actually kind of humorous. Where are they here? There they are. That is Plastruck ladders. They're little staircases. So he's Cut, uh, sunk these staircases into the hood and then filed them down <laughs> so that they look like louvers. 
So again, really cool stuff in here. So I was looking in that Ranchero kit again, and I found this brown body. Now this would be a perfect candidate for that book because it's in that rust color. But I was taking a closer look at this, and I noticed that, like around here, it's kind of lumpy and something weird. And then I saw this. This is not a plastic model kit. This is actually one of the resin ones I think John was trying to copy. Or something. It looks good. It tricked me. But then on the inside, you can see, because in the old days they used to slush mold all these resin kits, and I think that's what John did. And you can see here, there's like this weird welt in here. That's slush molding. Because what they do is, you get, the mo you, you get a good model, and you make a mold of it, rubber mold. And then you pull your good model out of it, turn the rubber mold over like this. And then with a paintbrush, you paint the resin inside. Let, let, let a layer of it dry, then paint another layer and paint another until it's that thick, right? And then you pull it out, out of the mold. But inside, it's always rough and weird because that's where you're using a paintbrush. And uh, that ripple right there is part of that paintbrush technique. And it looks like, <laughs> if this is John's, he never got rid of the seam line issue before you put it in the mold. <laughs> so that's from the plastic kit. But at any rate, I could use this in that brown and test out those rust techniques because, like adding the salt or whatever, because I don't really need this. This is not, uh, this is like a duplicate piece that already has the roof cut off and a whole bunch of things. So. I can't really see me using this for anything. So yeah, that's kind of an added bonus. And now that brings us to the final bit of this video, the last model I can show, and that is the Batmobile from the Classic 66 television show. This is one I wanted to get back, well, I get. I think this is the first issue of this kit, because this is brand new. Uh, this one I wanted to get back in the day, but again, it was like, okay, I got the money. Oh, now it's not a here. Okay, now the next one comes. Well, do I want it? Oh, it's gone too. Oh, you know, this sort of thing. So I'm glad John had one of these. And this one has been opened. It just, he, he did what my dad did and <laughs> left the plastic wrap on the top. Classics Reborn. He did have the Munsters coach and the Dragula up there, but I didn't grab it. And I'll have to do a full unboxing of this. But basically we have our Batmobile Lincoln Futura kit. Boy, this looks good. Alright, so I'll have to do an actual unboxing of this later. But I thought I would just show you part of it and uh, see what you thought. Now, I don't think this one came with the figures. Later ones do. And now the most recent release has Penguin and Catwoman stealing the car, which I think would be a cool one to get. Oh, it's got turning wheels. Nice. Yeah, so I can actually build one stock and then build i I'll try to get the Batman with the uh, Penguin and the Catwoman. The Penguin has kidnapped me again, Robin. <laughs> I do believe the Catwoman is behind it all. <laughs> anyway. So I hope you enjoyed this video where we got to take a look at the little bit of John's collection that I acquired here. And um, again, I'd like to thank the family and I'd like to thank my friend John for helping me get my business going in the initial days and to look forward to, you know, continuing on with what I've got. It's been 20 years of monster hobbies, 20 years of well, a little more than 20 years of being a friend of John's. And again, thanks to the John and the family for helping me get a go and to carry on. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, rather somber, I guess, uh, stash ad. And uh, I hope to see you in my next videos. And until next time, everyone, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.